So I want you to think back to Tuesday, okay? In particular, I want you to remember, we defined this in a geometric way, right? And if you see this is equal to some number over here, like say five, how do you read that? How do you geometrically explain what's going on? What shape do you get? You get a circle, okay? And the reason why is because you're measuring a distance from the origin and you're saying, I want that distance to always be the same number. Right? And that traces out the, that's the radius then. Okay, so there's your circle. And then we extended that just a teeny little bit. And we said, oh, okay, well, if you introduce, if you throw an extra, uh, like a, a number in here, another complex number, okay, you're still measuring a distance. You're still measuring distance, but what's the difference? Yeah, very good. Instead of measuring from the origin, from the origin, right? You're measuring from W. That's your new um, point of reference, as it were, right? You still have a radius of five, but your circle's now moved somewhere else, okay? So that's sort of the, the piece of knowledge you need to call on when you look at this, right? So you can see, this is still going to be a circle. What can you tell me about the circle? The center, I, I heard two things, the, the two facts that I need, okay? Um, the radius is going to be, I can just read off the radius, it's right there, okay? And then the, where is the center going to be? 2 plus 2i. Two yeah, 2 plus 2i. So the first thing I'm going to do as I solve this question is I'm just going to rewrite that in the right form to make it a little more obvious. This is modulus of z minus, and then I provide my points. So I've got to take that minus, that negative out. So that's going to be 2 plus 2i as you, oops, as you suggested. Okay, so there's my point of reference, and here is the radius I'm interested in, okay? Alright, so now I've got a sort of a rough picture in my head. Then I have a look at the question. Find the range of mod z, and find the range of arg z. Okay, so you can see part of the theme of, can you see the theme of this morning's graphs? Last time we focused on, on distances, today we're going to focus on arguments. We want to find, okay, well what's the biggest mod z can be? And what's the smallest it can be? That's, that's the range, right? And what's the biggest this can be? What's the smallest that can be? So clearly, I need a picture, all right? So we're going to answer this question on the basis of this picture. In fact, because there are two bits, I'm actually, this is going to be easiest for you to understand. If we draw two separate pictures, the same graph, but we're going to use one to do this one, and then the other one to use this one. You can use the one diagram if you're really cheap, but it's going to get confusing. There's going to be way too many lines on there, and um, let's, let's do this right. So, Think about what that looks like. Try and get the scale reasonable. Think about this, right? You know where this is. Let's start to draw this together. Come in. Two plus two i, that tells you, go two units this way. One, two, and then go two units up. One, two. So now I know, okay, there's my center. Right? Now your radius of root 2, what is root 2 roughly? You only need to do it roughly. 1. About 1.4, okay? So if like, if I go this, that's 1 away from the center, 1.4 is going to be like a little bit further, okay? So a point like that, that's going to be on the circumference. I can make the same argument going down here, right? I can go 1.4, it's going to be about there. Those are both on the circumference. And now I can sort of trace out my circle with a better whiteboard marker once I get one, okay? So, you've got the circle, you've got the rough idea. Draw me a pair of those, because we're going to use one of them to find the range of mod z, and the other one to find the range of arg z. Go ahead. Let's do these one at a time, right? So I've got my rough picture. I should probably put some extra details on here, because I've said this guy up here is 2 plus 2i. Actually, it's a bad place to write it. That's where that is, right? I also know where the radii are, they'll come in in a second. This first one, let's have a think about mod z. Okay? Now look at the geometry of this. The question we're trying to answer is, what's the smallest mod z could possibly be? And what's the largest? Okay, now have a look at the diagram. The smallest value of mod z is that all of these, this, this circle we've drawn out, it's all the possible z's. Z can be anywhere on the circumference of this circle. Okay? Now which of those z's is closest to the origin? Just look at it geometrically, right? You can see, when you think about things in terms of like just straight lines, you know the shortest distance from a point to a straight line is the perpendicular distance, right? It's the perpendicular distance. Now this is not a straight line, 
But because of what we know from calculus, right, you can kind of treat this surface like a straight line at an infinite series of points. Okay? Now, where would be the closest perpendicular distance? Just have a look at it. Do you not think it would be that spot right there? Right? It's like, look, I'm trying to cross through it. I'm trying to get there as quickly as I possibly can. If I sort of deviate <coughs> off to this over here, you can see the line literally gets longer and longer and longer. Does that make sense? And of course, if I cross over to the other side of this, well, there's no point doing that. Okay? So I want one of these kinds of lines. And if I go straight there in a perpendicular sort of direction, I'll be fine. Right? So how do I get this distance? Right? Well, let's see how well this tracks along. There's where I connect my dots, okay? That's where I connect my dots. And that point there that I'm interested in, I think that's the closest one, right? And I can actually prove that geometrically, but looking at this question, this is not a proof question. It's enough to be able to understand, look at what's going on, get a sense of it from my graph, because graphing is a superpower, and then use the geometry here to work out what's going on. If this is 2 plus 2i, and I know the radius of this circle, through 2, how can I use that to find out where that point is. Because once I know where the point is, finding the modulus is very easy. Sorry, so I heard some I said some vague, indistinct answers. Is anyone brave enough to actually think this might actually work for us? Uh, is it 3 plus 2i minus root 2? Okay, so if I wanted 2 plus 2i minus root 2, think about this, right? Root 2, just on its own, is a real number. This is just a real number. So if I took this number, and subtracted a real number on the complex plane. Real numbers tell me about horizontal displacement. Where, where am I horizontally? So 2 plus 2i minus root 2 is going to take me from here, root 2, in that direction. Right? In fact, 2 plus 2i minus root 2 is this point right here, which is a good point, but it's not the point I'm after. What else can we do, Harry? Okay? Will it be x squared plus y squared minus root 2? So x like squared x being 2 and y being 2. Okay, alright. So, you can think about it this way, right? Remember, I just want mod z. I just want this distance, right? Now, I know what this distance is. Like, I can find that out, right? That's just Pythagoras. That's just, you know, x squared plus um, y squared. Take the square root. Well, you just need to subtract that from here. This is just a straight line. Do you see that? Here's another way that I could think about it. There's a right angle triangle there, right? Angle <coughs> triangles, they get into every angle like soon. So if the pipe, if the um, if this angle over here, sorry, this hypotenuse over here is root two, and keep in mind, like two plus two i, right? Two plus two i. What is the argument up to two plus two i? This angle in here. This is pi on four, forty-five degrees, isn't it? That's pi on four. Then that's pi on four. If that's pi on four, that's pi on four. So what kind of triangle is this? It's not just right angles, it's also isosceles. So these two sides are the same. Something squared plus something squared will be that squared. Pretty sure that's the 1, 1, root 2 triangle that you use for like your exact ratio for, um, for tree, right? So if this is 1 down and 1 across, then what are the coordinates of this point from 2 plus 2i? I mean, it's just going to be 1 plus i, isn't it? Like there's 2 plus 2i, you went down. That meant you took away an i. You went to the left, means you took away one. Are you happy with that? Does that make sense? Now, by the same argument, because in fact you've got congruence here, I now know what this argument here, sorry, this modulus is here, right? It's the same triangle. I could draw another one, right? There it is. Still the same dimensions. So therefore, the smallest distance, the minimum value of mod z, is going to be root 2. Are you happy with the way that I did that? Does that make sense? Now, you can argue very quickly, based on all that geometric work, on where the furthest distance will be. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go right across the opposite side of the circle. Right? In fact, I'm just going to extend this line. Okay? It's a bit wonky, but you get the idea. Okay? Again, not by coincidence, it's the same 1, 1, root 2 triangle over here. I don't even need to, I mean, it's very easy to work out that that's 3 plus 3i, but I don't even care that it's 3 plus 3i. You can see the distance is going to be 1, 2, 3 lots of root 2. Does that make sense? So therefore, off of that, here's the smallest it can be. Here's the biggest it can be. So root 2 must be less than or equal to 1 z, which is less than or equal to 3 root 2. Okay, that's the range, right? You're used to thinking of range just about y values, but range can refer to anything you like. 
You just want the biggest and smallest things it can possibly be. Okay. Right. Does anyone have any questions on that? Like, why doesn't it trail off? What do you mean by trail off? Like, why do we stop there? Uh, stop where? Like, uh, through route two. Up here? Like, as in, why don't I go up here? stops there. Oh, I see. Okay, so the whole idea is, it's a great question. When I say, if this, right, what that means is, I can't go anywhere on the complex plane. I can only go, Z can only go, on the places in the complex plane that obey these rules, right? And we, we saw from last week, oh, well, this gives us a circle. So that means all of the, the Zs that can exist, all exist on this circle. Z can't be here or here or here or here for that matter. Okay. So the only z's that can be useful to me are the ones on the circumference of this circle. So that's why this line doesn't just go on forever, because z can never ever be here. It's not on the circumference. Okay. All right. Good question. Okay. Now I held your hand a lot to help you work out the geometry of this, and therefore how I approached this. Let me give you a few moments to get a head start on me, because we're thinking about angles. There's going to be some different argument required. But again, you've got the diagram. You can see what I meant by by it getting busy. Okay. Think again. Where might you go if you were trying to minimize not a distance, but an argument, right? Like pick a point on the circle and think about, I mean, an easy one is this one, which we already know, okay? So we know the argument of that particular z is pi on 4. But I reckon you could get a smaller argument than that, right? Like you can see parts on the circle, points on the circle, that have a smaller argument. And you can see ones which have a bigger argument. Where would you go on the circle? Have a go give you two or three minutes to scroll on your diagram and um, try and make an argument.